So I am Fahad Salahat. I'm a PhD student at Kansas State University. I'm working with Professor Haider Rashid and Dr. Christopher Jones. Uh, today I will be talking about the uh, analytical prediction of covered elimination failure mode of reinforced concrete beams strengthened with FRB. Here is my, my outline for today's presentation. I will introduce the topic, then our objectives and the methodology followed in this research, uh, our hypothesis and the analytical formulation and investigation of database and our experimental program and validation, then we conclude our results. So as an introduction here, um, FRB is a common strengthening technique used to improve the structural capacity of uh, the elements. And we, uh, through the investigation, we had different failure modes happening uh, with reinforced concrete being strengthened with FRB. The ultimate sectional capacity that we can get uh, happens uh, at the two different modes, which are the concrete crushing uh, at the most compressed fibers of the concrete and the rupture of the FRB uh, laminates. Uh, however, sometimes we don't get to, the, to this point and failure happens before this. And this is called premature failure. And we have two main modes for a premature failure. The first is the blade deponding, where the blade uh, separates for, from the concrete sub substrate. And the other one is the concrete, or sorry, the covered delamination. And this is our uh, topic for today's presentation. Here, the blade uh, goes with a portion of concrete cover and both right from the first beam. Uh, SI4 provisions provide a limit state to account for debonding, uh, which is given by this equation. However, uh, experimental uh, studies showed that the cover delay happens typically at a state a strain is lower than uh, the debonding strain, and the code the provisions provide uh, a limit to account for this has been done to predict this failure mode and one of these is our uh, research. So our objective is to study the cover delamination failure mode and initiate a model that can predict it. Then we uh, want to collect experimental tests for reinforced uh, concrete beams that failed in cover delamination so that we can study this phenomenon and also uh, use this database for analysis and initiating our uh, model. Lastly, uh, we wanted to conduct exper an experiment uh, so that we can validate our model and apply it on our experiment. So the methodology is starting by the analytical study uh, and the formulation of the, the, one, uh, the cover delamination failure mode. Then we will use the database that we collected to uh, investigate and help uh, development in our model. We will do the experimental uh, program and then we will validate our results. So what is the cover delamination uh, as a failure mode? It's actually when the beam is loaded, there is a a horizontal interfacial shear stress that happens due to the tension force in the FRB laminate. So this uh, shear stress actually uh, causes the separation of the weakest surface, but we have two potential uh, surfaces to separate. And the first one is uh, at the level of the uh, reinforcement, the steel reinforcement, and the other one is uh, lower at the level of the plate. So when we have the shear stress uh, at the level of the plate and the weakest uh, surface is the bond between the, uh, the plate and the beam substrate, we have a debonding failure mode. However, when the weakest uh, or when the bond stresses at uh, the steel reinforcement form the weakest surface, then we have a cover delamination failure mode. So as you can see, um, we uh, actually modeled uh, the portion of the concrete that is 
as you, it's the left photo where, where we have the part of the beam uh, separating and the shear stresses that exist at the level of the steel reinforcement. Uh, also, uh, study uh, conducted uh, by uh, Rashid Dal in 2013 showed that uh, the interfacial shear stresses exist in three uh, regions. The first one is the uncracked portion of the beam and the post-cracked and the post-yielding. Uh, since we have uh, stress concentration at the tip of the plate, then uh, we will have throughout the plate two shear interfacial shear stresses, the post-cracking and the post-yielding. And uh, the post-yielding uh, is limited in range and the section becomes dynamic and too much deformations there. So uh, the post-cracking is the dominant and the stable one to consider. And his, from here, we developed our hypothesis, which is all beams will fail at a moment that is larger than the cracking moment. And for this, uh, we also uh, assume that all the beams will have a common uh, feature, which is the uh, post-cracking shear. Uh, so to special stress in the post-cracking region, uh, with the parameters of the different beams that we collected in our database so that we can develop a model uh, for Kepard delamination. In order to do this, we uh, need to do the trilinear uh, sectional response. And uh, the trilinear sectional response is uh, actually is a representation of the uh, cross-sectional response uh, at three linear uh, regions. The first one is up to the cracking uh, capacity. The second uh, one is up to the yielding capacity. And the last one is the nominal capacity. So um, whenever we have a moment that uh, we want to find the sectional response, we need to project this moment uh, to the corresponding uh, segment or linear segment. So if the moment we are concerned uh, is uh, between the cracking and the yielding, which is our case in the post-cracking region, we consider the second segment so that we, uh, can, we can get the curvature of the section. And, uh, the paper. However, and the segment, which is the post cracking. Uh, so we can, we need the uh, cracking moment and the yielding moment of the section. We need the cracking curve. And in 2000, uh, it says that trying in representation, the moment versus the strain at the, uh, at the concrete, uh, fibers. So when we have the moment uh, that we are concerned in, we can project this moment uh, to the previous two graphs. This is one of them. And the other one is this. Uh, we can get the curvature of the section and the, and the concrete level. And if we do have two parameters, we can obtain the full section response, the strength compatibility equations as so what is the post cracking shear stress of the trilinear equation? It's uh, the, the moment we are looking for, which is the sectional capacity times the uh, FRB modulus of elasticity, the number of FRB layers, the thickness of the layer. Uh, and then we have the trilinear uh, parameters, which are X bar times the depth of the FRB, which is DF minus Z bar divided by the shear span. All of these parameters are indicated. X bar is a function of the cracking and the yielding curvature and the cracking and the yielding moment. And Z bar is a function of the cracking and the yielding uh, concrete strain and the cracking and yielding moment. So here we come to our database. We collected 78 beams uh, that failed in cover delamination from 14 different publications. Each beam was uh, model, modeled with, uh, it's 20 for, we have 21 uh, different parameters for each beam. 
we wrote a Python code to read the data, analyze it, and then write the results for us. We wanted to validate the trilinear, the trilinear representation. Uh, and in order to do so, uh, we, uh, we did solve the equal, two equilibrium equations at the failure uh, capacity of the beam. The first one is the force equilibrium equation should equal to zero. And the second one is the moment uh, equilibrium equation, which is equal to the failure moment. So we solved two equations and obtained two unknowns, which are the concrete epsilon CF. Uh, those provided us to obtain the, the complete strain profile analytically. And then in the, in the trilinear um, procedure, we pro projected the failure moment experimentally to the trilinear representation and we obtained the curvature and the strain in the, in the concrete. And from there, we obtained the strain in the, FRP, in the FRP layer. So here's the results of the strain in the FRP layer from the analytical solution versus the trilinear. And you can see how perfect it's matching. So our uh, conclusion for this, we can use the trilinear representation to uh, develop our model and to predict the cover delamination failure. Uh, also, it's a good point to mention here that we started with 78 beams. Six of these beams did not converge uh, to a solution, so we could not uh, solve the analytical equations. And the three beams failed experimentally at a moment that is larger than the sectional, the sectional capacity, the analytical sectional capacity. So we left with 69 beams in our database. Uh, for our correlation, we did multiple uh, studies and iterations. And the best one that correlated is, uh, as shown here, with a regression of uh, 96, almost 96%. So we found that the relationship between uh, the post cracking interfacial shear stress times the square root of the plate shear span divided the shear span. This, uh, this is y axis. It's, uh, it, it correlates to the x axis, which is, as you see here, different parameters. All of these are the parameters related to the beam and the strengthening, strengthening configuration. So when we are able to evaluate uh, the x axis, which is uh, this is square root, uh, we have a relationship that gives us the post cracking shear stress. The definition of the different uh, parameters included, as you can see them here. And this is um, how we can apply our uh, model. So we start by uh, finding the trilinear parameters, the cracking and the yielding curvature and the cracking and yielding moment, the cracking and yielding strain in the uh, concrete so that we can uh, evaluate X bar and Z bar. From there, we go to evaluate the sectional or the beam properties in terms of this concrete compressive strength, she, uh, the shear span of the plate, the, the length of the beam, and the other parameters involved. So once we have this term, we multiply this term by 0 0.0133. This gives us tau post cracking time, the square root of a shear span of the plate divided by the beam length. From there, we can obtain the post-cracking shear stress. And the moment, the security is a function of the post-cracking shear stress as shown in the equation and the, uh, the derivation of these equations are provided in details in Rishi Detail 2013. And uh, when we apply this procedure on our database that we are uh, with, here's a comparison between the results of the procedure and the experimental uh, failure moment of the database. And to more validate more uh, model, we uh, conducted an experimental study. We did uh, four tests of uh, four beams strengthened with FRP sheets. The strengthening uh, characteristics are shown in that table. 
we vary the number of layers of the FRP and we vary the length of the FRP sheet. A sectional area of the beam is shown, it's uh, six inches by six inches. And the test was four point bending. Here when we prepared the specimens and cast it, here are the, the standards for compressive stress uh, strength of uh, concrete and the preparation of the Here we apply the FRP and install the strain gauges. And here is the testing. So a quick, uh, this is the first beam. So this is failing in deep bonding. Here is the second beam, failing in cover delamination. Here is the third beam, also failing in cover delamination. Here is the fourth beam, and also failing in cover delamination. So out of the three, out of the four beams we, we did, the first one failed in, in debonding, and the remaining three failed in cover delamination. Here are the uh, experimental results in terms of the uh, mid-span deflection and the ultimate capacity. So we reported uh, and the, the, the moment, the failure, which is the experiment with the remaining three. Here is the experiment. And see. One, which is the last one, we have a high percent of error. Failed before. Actually, do, do not correlate very well. So our conclusion is the post-cracking correlation is valid to predict the failure load in cover delamination. And uh, the accuracy of the model is, uh, it can be improved by uh, improving the factor K times the shear span over the plate shear span. And this model works very well for the steel for the beam that fail after the yielding of the steel. Okay, so uh, you were breaking up a little bit here and there. So I assume that it is over because we couldn't hear if you finish your statement. Are you looking at this slide? Probably you're over. Um, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, there was, as I said, a little bit of uh, breaking throughout your presentation, but still, please let me know if there are any questions, please type it in, in the Q&A uh, box. Um, so I have one question uh, and uh, we are waiting for other questions. We can have like maybe a few questions from audience. Um, so I wanna know that, uh, do you think uh, the concrete cover, it shouldn't be included into the model you're proposing. You don't think that it would be uh, effective on these two type of failure modes? So as a parameter study, do you mean the, 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 how much concrete cover we have? Well, I know that it is one inch. That's what you showed, but I, I didn't see that. Maybe I missed it, that it wasn't included into the model you're proposing. Yeah, you mean as a parameter, a separate parameter that we have. Okay, so actually we uh, we modeled the the whole cover, not just the concrete cover, the cover to the steel reinforcement. So as you can see from the this slide, yeah, here. So we are we are concerned with the how much is the. Uh, the total cover and what we did um this actually had took a place in the yielding and uh, estimating the yielding and the the cracking sectional capacity so i think it's involved in a way or another because when when we find the cracking and the yielding sectional capacity we uh were the depth of the section so uh, it's involved in a way or another
but it's not involved directly in our model. It might be involved uh, indirectly in the trilinear representation. All right. There is another question coming from audience and panelists here. Is that uh, end peeling is easily mitigated by anchoring the end of the sheet? Mm -hmm. What is the need for this model then? When you, when you don't want to use the anchor, it's as simple as that. Am I right? All right. If you want to use anchorage, yeah, it's an efficient technique that can prevent cover delamination. But sometimes, it, for, for a reason or another, you can't use anchorage. Then you need to prevent this happening. And this is why this model is there. Thank you, Fahed, for your presentation.